I'm going to do a little tutorial for those of us who are uh, Mac users who want to do antenna design. There is a nice little program that's available free on the internet called Coco NEC. Way up here in the uh, upper right corner we have the icon for Coco NEC which you can download and uh, put on your desktop or wherever. Double click on it and you can see that uh, it the uh, bar up here has changed even though no windows opened. But uh, if we go to file here we can uh, either create a new model or look at a recent model and it'll give you a listing here. Or you can open a uh, a model that's uh, on file, which is what we'll do. We'll start with this basic dipole. We'll open that, or I could have double clicked it. So here we have that it's uh, relative to the driven element in this instance, uh, zero in the X plane on both ends of the dipole. Here it's uh, minus. 5.18, that's one end of the wire, so 0, 5, minus 5.18, and 0, plus 5, 1.8 on the other end of the dipole. And those are in meters. In this instance, as you see, it's set up for metric. And we're 12 meters approximately off the uh, ground. That's the Z, or elevation uh, height whatever you want to call it. The radius of the wire is 0.814. In this case that happens to be uh, about an inch I believe. We'll find out. We'll go down here to this display and put English. Okay. Ah, that's right. That's 0 0.032 inches. I'm sorry. This is a, a, an actual wire in this case. And our z-axis is at 40 feet, and we're almost 17 feet uh, on one side from zero uh, from the middle, and on the other side from the middle. Uh, so that's what we've got. The environment that we're working in presently is a single frequency at 14.080. The ground in this case is a good ground. 20 uh, relative dielectric constant with a conductivity of 0 0.0303 mohs per uh, meter. And so that's the way this particular file is presently set up. We'll close that. Uh, we can look at this in terms of meters as well, wavelengths, uh, I should say. So it's uh, 0.2432 wavelength and uh, half a wavelength. So that's a uh, quarter wavelength on either side. That gives you a half wavelength overall. A little less than a half wavelength overall, apparently. Um, and um, we're uh, 0.57 uh, wavelengths uh, above the ground. That doesn't seem right, though, at 40 feet. Oh, yes. Yes, that would be correct. I'm sorry. Let's uh, look at that again in English. Yeah, so 16 feet, so 40 feet. Yeah, that's 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 a uh, overall wavelength. And 21 segments is what they've uh, set up for the segments, which is a, a neck function. I don't think there's anything beyond this we need to know. No, so there you go. So we're ready to run. So let's run the thing. Oh, right there. We already have uh, the answer. Here's the azimuth of the dipole. Uh, here's the elevation. Notice that the elevation angle looks to be, what, 10, 20, maybe 25, 24 dB, uh, tw uh, 24 degrees. And it says it's 25 degrees here. And uh, the maximum gain is 8.46 dBi. So uh, half of that was, was, well, 6 dB subtracted from that because we're talking 
the ground one ground reflection which will double the voltage which is 6 db so that makes this 846 uh, down to uh, 2.46 dbi and a dipole is usually 2.15 dbi in free space so that uh, squares fairly well uh, the extra gain here probably has to do with the ground reflecting a little more than uh, than uh, we were thinking uh, anyway so and we're at, that's at 14.080 so let's see what else we can get well here's the azimuth only and you can save that off using this button up here for the printer elevation only again save it uh, three dimension three dimensional here 3d and you can uh, move that around here nicely you can adjust the contrast as well you can look on the Smith chart and you can see that we have a fairly decent match here standing wave is uh, 1.2 to 1 it shows here 60 ohms at minus J 0.3 ohms or we can look at a scalar representation and it's sitting right on the zero ohm thing here but uh, as far as the uh, reactants and it's uh, in the 60 ohm region here uh, this is minus 50 plus 50 that would be 60 40 30 etc uh, that's R and X but we can also find out what the visvoir is and the visvoir looks like it's pretty low uh, we can change that here to say one and a half to one so there's a uh, one one and a half so this is 1.2 uh, one imagine that and return loss is another way we can do it we have 10 db here presently or we can go to say 20 db all right so now we're looking 0 20 40 and we're at just over 20 db or we can go back to uh, 10 db per and this is uh, 10 and 20 etc so that gives you a, a pretty good idea what we have for a match in that case Here's the geometry of the uh, dipole and the current, uh, which is less at the ends and more in the middle, as you would expect. The elevation uh, is the rotation around this way, I believe. Let's find out. Oh, no. Okay. It's the other way. All right. So uh, 45 is a pretty good number. Azimuth. So we're changing both things here and you can uh, make this bigger if you want for printing purposes using your print uh, button up here or you can leave it at the uh, one time okay and then the summary card again which gives you the summary here plus the two uh, views here's the cards that uh, this thing is made up of cards being each line here uh, representing the old ibm bingo cards presumably and then the neck output so here's the numerical electromagnetics code um, information that you can uh, scroll through here get all of the information you want out of that you do have uh, a settings thing here so you can have the total or a vertical polarization or the horizontal polarization both left hand right hand circular right hand circular plus left hand circular you can use the default 0.89 a double rl per 2 db or the 0.80 or the 0.92 reference is 50 ohms and swr circle is at uh, 2 ohms uh, two times uh, just two to one I could change that for example to one and a half to one which is
probably a, a better goal. And you can uh, draw distributed loads and radials if you have them and backgrounds if you have them. So that's, uh, that's that. Turn it off again. So that's uh, your basic dipole. And uh, we're presently at 40 feet height. Notice up here we have height indicated when I double clicked on this box. Let's make that 90 feet, which would be about the maximum that a ham would probably have. So we'll go 90. Oops. It's got to be highlighted like you see now. Uh, 90 feet, and symbol for feet. And the same thing on this end, obviously. 90 feet. And we'll run that. And of course, all of this changes. Here's our azimuth. Doesn't change much there. Elevation, though, you notice we've, we're down to 10 degrees here. So a lot better radiation angle for DX. Uh, this is about where we were, where we were before, actually a little higher. So the local, more local paths would uh, uh, benefit from that. So that's what happens when you put, put this antenna up to 90 feet. And this is a 20 meter band, of course. And let's see what happens if we go to, oh, let's say, uh, Yeah, let's go to uh, 1,000 feet. That's essentially uh, 1,000 in free space. But we'll still have some ground effect, I imagine. We'll run that. Uh-huh. Very interesting. So you have a lot of radiation here. They're narrow beams, but they uh, have a lot of overlap, presumably, uh, once you hit the ionosphere. But you get clear down here on the lowest one to almost zero degrees. And uh, throughout this whole region here, you're getting pretty good uh, propagation out here. You have a little bit of a, a null here, but it's only, what, 3 dB, something like that. And then these are about a dB down all the way up this way. So that's pretty good, uh, but it still shows that there is a ground effect even at a thousand feet above the ground. Three dimensionally, it looks like that. As you can see, it sort of blends together. Let's uh, see what the, see if it affects the Smith chart much. Well, yeah, somewhat. It's closer to one and a half to one now, uh, I believe. And uh, it says it's 1.46. So there is a, a, an effect on the, uh, on the standing wave. With the scalar, let's look at it. Our return loss is now in the 14 dB region instead of the whatever it was before. I don't remember. But anyway, you, you can see that uh, and it's Closer to 72 ohms, too, notice. So that's the uh, sort of the natural uh, resonant uh, impedance of most dipoles. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with this and playing around with it. And uh, I, I think it's a very nice little program. I haven't learned everything about it yet, but this is uh, just a good starting program. Um, uh, introduction to what this program can do and I'll have uh, the information at the end of the uh, video as to where this can be obtained.